Thank you very much indeed, Tim. It's lovely to be here. Um, I um, uh, want to talk today about social CRM, and the, the kind of the agenda is, uh, first of all, kind of looking at where, where social CRM is today and getting a feel for uh, where, where the market's at. Uh, um, that might be you, it might be your competitors. There is still some discussion on what is social CRM, so I just want to kind of drill into that and then look at what are the hurdles and challenges to implementing it in practice and what are some people doing, and then uh, a bit of a glimpse of the future. So from, from kind of uh, my perspective, um, uh, sort of seeing where, what are the kind of the trends that are coming along that we're, we need to start preparing for now. So I hope that's a, the right kind of content that will fit uh, with what you are, are interested in hearing today. Um, just to start, just a little bit more about me, I actually come up with the latest term for me, which is a digital architect. <laughs> now, I, I have no idea whether that works or not, but um, yeah, essentially it involves uh, creating lots of web applications. I've been doing enterprise, non-profit, social marketing campaigns. Um, I used to, um, I created an, a social media agency, one of the uh, first ones called Nudge Social Media, which if you're familiar with Nudge Marketing. Uh, I, I sold that to another social media agency uh, a year and a half ago uh, called Syncaps. Um, uh, and then since then, I've been kind of involved in creative technology, game design, uh, application strategy, writing and blogging. Uh, and, uh, and I'm also doing my own startup, which is in Google Campus, which is in the kind of the, the, the hub of startup land in Tech City called leaderboarded.com. Uh, apologies for the name, it was the, because we can't afford it. The, 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 the short URL, but leaderboarded creates social data leaderboards. And uh, um, it's a, that's what I'm sort of spending my, my day job on. Uh, social CRM today. So, Broadly, we have initiatives led across the enterprise by different departments. So you'll probably recognize this. Your, it's, it, your, your, your social CRM is broadly so pushed by marketing. It might be your customer support, who's really kind of led the, the way in your organization. It might be the R&D, kind of an innovations bank. It might be the sales team who are, who are using social data. It might be PR, it might be HR. It, it, it doesn't really matter who, who, who's been leading it, but they've, they've all been leading it, but it's not been led in an integrated fashion. There's, it's kind of at the edge of the organization. Uh, we have all these different kind of uh, channels, outputs to social, but it hasn't kind of got its roots down deep into the organization, which I think where the CRM people get involved and actually getting all that uh, activity and providing a single point of, uh, point, point of reference for, for um, our customers. So, um, so that's where we are today. So, and some examples of that. Um, uh, marketing, I, I did a, uh, a very popular game on Facebook, which was called Buzz the Friend Quiz. Uh, and it, um, what it did is instead of asking trivia questions about uh, sort of, you know, who won the World Cup, etc., it asked fre questions about your mutual friends. So you, you'd play with two or three other people and it would say, which one of your mutual friends released, for example, recently announced the following, has a wave that won't open or delete, uh, and then you have to choose which of the four people said that and you get points. And that was a very popular game, got half a million players. We generated a, 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 large, a large amount of data, which was fresh data for the client. So it was you know, about 100,000 new email addresses of people they didn't have already on their database because uh, Facebook allowed them to reach out to kind of a whole new audience from their kind of core. Um, this is PlayStation from their core gaming audience. Suddenly they had a whole new... So the question was, how do we bring this data back into our CRM? And the CRM people were saying, well, uh, it's just an email address. You got it via Facebook. What, what do I do with that? I've got no field in my CRM system for that. I don't have any legal around it. I don't, it's not policy. You haven't forced people through a CRM form. So there was a whole kind of conversation that went on between the CRM people and the marketing of how to link those two things back together. Um, uh, Sales-led. So this is a tool called Nimble, uh, which is the latest kind of social CRM uh, social CRM for web application. So what Nimble lets you do is it'll if you've got if you're a sales guy and you've got your um, your contact that you're you're trying to con contact, it lets you connect up all his different uh, social networks. So this is Scott at uh, Bob Fantastic, and I've what I've done is I've I've got used the social profile matching tool um, to to say this is his Twitter account, this is his <coughs> Facebook account, this is his LinkedIn account, this is his Google Plus account. And um, because it's done that, it now provides for me two interesting pieces of information. Firstly, the social stream, so that's his latest social data that's coming through, uh, and then also a history of all my connection contact with him, whether that's email, whether that's Twitter, whether that's um, uh, an event that we went together. So uh, what, what Nimble CRM have done for me as a sale, from a sales perspective is they've, they've allowed me to kind of link together uh, for my contacts their different uh, social data. Now, um, again, that's useful um, from a sales-led kind of sales CRM point of view. 
Uh, and finally, kind of customer service organisation led. The, this is the, the, the most uh, popular sort of example of this is where Carphone Warehouse started to see tweets appearing uh, on Twitter, sort of complaining about Carphone Warehouse. So they have actually set up a whole team, a sort of response team on fa on Twitter to to respond. So you could, they, um, this is the CPW Cares account. And um, it, so, so you can see here, at John Godfrey, really sorry if you're having issues, please complete the form and we'll look into it for you, thanks. So they've, they've seen something pop up and if you complain on Twitter about Carphone Warehouse, you'll probably get a kind of a, a, a fairly swift response um, uh, from CPW Cares. The recent uh, brand marketing, uh, just to sort of kind of put, put some, um, a little bit of fear in our bellies, the, the expectation of somebody who complains on Twitter is that they're gonna get a response within about 10 minutes. Okay, that's, and that's from, from Brandwatch. So we have to be aware that these social channels are not only, uh, not only sort of there, but they're also, there's an expectation that, that we're going to respond fast as organisations to what people are saying about us on the social channels. Uh, but Carphone Warehouse is really ahead of it there. So that's sort of customer support organisation led. So what is social CRM? Um, there's a long definition which has been running around, which I'll, I'll read out, um, which is social CRM is the integration of traditional operational facing, customer facing activities, so that's like your customer support, sales, including strategies, programs, systems and technologies with emergent social channels, so that's your uh, Facebooks, your Twitters, your Pinterests, uh, provide businesses with the means to communicate and engage with customers in their <laughs> preferred channels for mutual benefit. To be honest, that's a bit of a long definition, uh, and I prefer just a sort of a shorter one, which is integrating social data into CRM. I think really, at the moment, what we're talking about with social CRM is how do we take all this social data and fit it back into what we're already doing in terms of customer relationship management. So, what does that mean? For example, the unified customer view. So here's a, here's a, here's a, a, a thorny question for you. And, and there, 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 isn't a, there isn't a right, this is one of those, I'm going to give you something that there is no right or wrong answer to, I'm afraid. It's going to be different for each business. So you want to create a single customer view. That's what we're, all, what, what we're there for. There are actually now two ways you can do it. The one is the kind of you as a business can unify the customer record. So this is Nimble again. There, this is another contact. And there's me going through manually linking his different customer, lim linking his different social networks to his, his contact record that I have from as a business. Or you can take a separate approach, which is what um, a Clout do. So Clout is, a, um, is, a, is an influence score. So what Clout do is they, 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 they have an influence score of every, all of the kind of the, the 100 million people who are or so, or I don't know how big their database is, but it's somewhere between 100 and 800 million uh, of, of uh, consumers and they give each consumer a score between 0 and 100 in terms of how influential they are. So, uh, uh, and it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of an exponential thing. So Lady Gaga is number 80, uh, David Cameron, I don't know, he's probably about, seven, <coughs> he's about 70, uh, Justin Bieber is 100, so <laughs> not necessarily, it's not necessarily as valuable as you want it to be. Um, but what we can see with what Clout do is they say, if you want to get your Clout score up, and there's a whole kind of communities dedicated to getting the highest Clout score that you can, okay? Uh, if you want to get your Clout score up, then go to Clout and link all your social networks together. So uh, go, I went onto Clout and I connected my, I told Clout, I'm Toby Beresford on Twitter. This is my Facebook account. This is my Google Plus account. This is my LinkedIn account. This is my Foursquare account. This is my WordPress account. And it's, you know, it's a bit sort of arduous, but once it's all connected, Clout can then go to all those social networks and pick up data about me to feed its algorithm to work out what should Toby's Clout score be. <laughs> um, so, but from, from a CRM point of view, that's unifying the customer record, but getting the customer to do it. Okay, and that is a, it's a, it's a plausible way of going about it. Uh, segmentation, an another sort of a part of uh, what we're doing in, in customer, customer um, CRM is that uh, we, can, um, we, can, we, can, we can have different views on that as well. We can use social data to segment. So a lot of people have already put into Facebook an enormous amount of data that we, we, would, call, we would use as segmentation data, their age, their gender, you know, whether they're in a relationship or not, uh, what they like, whether they, they, whether they already like this part of the brand, this product. We've already got that sort of data that we can use. So we can, we can use that sort of self-selecting segmentation data that social gives us. Secondly, we can use... Um, uh, sec 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 secondly, we can use um, gamification 
Um, so in this example here, Lithium have actually got the customers to go up through a different kind of levels on their support network. So this is a, um, this is a Skype support query. So I, I, say, I say I'm having trouble calling the US from overseas. Somebody else comes in and says, yes, I can answer that, getting the customers to support each other. And um, as they do that, they go up through the network going from a, a new member, occasional con contributor, super user, and finally they might actually be given the power of a moderator. So, um, this kind of, what we can do is actually use the tools themselves to get the customers to self-segment. And of course, what we know about these people here, the people who are really engaged and moderating, they're our super advocates, they're the people who really like our brand, they like our company. And we, we've actually, we don't have to do any work at all in finding out who they are because they've kind of self-selected, they've done the work themselves. And then prioritization. Here's um, one of the ladies at the Cafe Pacific First in Business Class Lounge in San Francisco Airport. And if you, go, if you were to go there and you weren't flying Cafe Pacific, but you flashed your clout score, and if your clout score which was over, over 40, you'd be, she'd let you in and you'd be able to go and have a nice cup of coffee and use the Wi-Fi. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so why are Cafe Pacific doing that? They, 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 they're very interested to see that they want influencers, they want people who have kind of, who, who are able to talk about Cafe Pacific, they, they, uh, and they're also getting obviously some valuable kind of data and people coming through their doors and brand recognition. So, that's, that's, um, that's what social media CRM is, but what are, the, what are the hurdles? What are the, what are the things that we're having trouble with, uh, to, to, um, trouble with to put into practice? So, I think the first thing I kind of, first thing I, and this is, for me is a bit of a major takeaway, and, and the more one looks at social CRM, the more one deals with social data, the first thing that you need to realize is you can't track everything. There isn't a, sing there isn't a single button you can push and say, I want social for my customers. There isn't a single kind, of, single kind of social network, single channel that is social that I can just suck data in. As an example, Orkut, which I, I, doubt, I, I wouldn't expect many of you to have heard of, it, but is, is a Google social network. It's kind of pre-Google Plus social network, and it's still going. And the reason it's still going is that it only really matters if you're Brazilian, because all the Brazilians are on Orkut, they're not on anything else. So um, we don't, if, if, I was, if you're marketing to Brazilians, then Orkut is a, is a very important social channel. If you're not marketing to Brazilians, Orkut doesn't matter. And it, that's a kind of a black and white thing. And just to sort of, just to really ram home this point about that you can't track everything, have a think what you might do in 60 seconds, and then let's, have, let's, let's see this, this chart of what happens on the web in 60 seconds. Okay, in 60 seconds, there's 1,600 reads on Scribd. There's 13,000 hours of music on Pandora, 12,000 ads on Craigslist, List, 370,000 minutes on Skype, 320 new Twitter accounts, 100 new LinkedIn accounts, uh, 600 new photos on Flickr, 50 WordPress downloads, 695,000 Facebook updates, uh, 50 WordPress, uh, seven, Firefox, search queries, 168 million emails, still pretty big, so 60 plus blog posts, 70 domains, 600 new videos on YouTube, 100 answers. That's in 60 seconds. You know, poof, just, that's, so that's by the time it's taken me to go around that, we've, we've, already, we've already generated that amount of content. Now, uh, there is no way that you as an organization can take in, suck in all of this data and, and, and deal with it. it just, that, that's just not the way, um, that's not the way to deal with social. So, so, so I, I really want to kind of, debunk this idea of a data ocean, the, the idea that you create a data ocean within your business. It's, to be honest, I don't, I don't think that's really where we're going with social CRM. Social, C, social data is best thought of as a stream. It's a stream of data flushing past you. You might be connecting to a big river like Facebook or a small river like Scribd, or uh, it doesn't really matter. The, the point is you're, we're kind of standing on the side of the stream seeing all this data come past. And the question is, how do we do something with that data in an interesting way for our customers? So when you're, if you're harvesting social data about your customers, it's for immediate use. Yeah, it's, it's the 10 minutes, the 10 minute window. It's not the sort of, we've got all this data, we've made a nice database now, what do we do with it? That's, that's I think, the wrong mindset. So, and I think social data value, the value of it decays very rapidly, just as uh, an article on old media is yesterday's news, to today's stories are yesterday's fish and chips, paper when, it was, when, that was, when that was true. Um, it's just very much the same with social media. You know, a tweet, the next tweet, it, it's going through very quickly. So as social CRM people, we need to be thinking not about harvesting data and storing it, but grabbing the data and responding as soon as we can to it. 
Uh, next hurdle, big data that we're talking about here is expensive. So data itself is not cheap. It's a, it's a commodity you have to buy. Uh, so this is a company called Datasift, um, who, um, who are one of only two companies that have um, got the license to uh, resell uh, Twitter's fire hose. So what does that, what do I, what does that mean if I explain that in English? The, 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 um, the, the Twitter's, Twitter's fire hose. Twitter, Twitter, so if you imagine Twitter, so 65 million tweets a day. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a big kind of loads of tweets coming down. Now, the way they describe it is that you can, you can buy the data from Twitter. You can either buy a garden hose, which is kind of a, a, small, a subset of those 65 million tweets, or you can buy the fire hose, which is coming straight through this far stream. Um, but connecting to the fire hose is... You, you need a kind of a, a pretty serious system to be able to deal with that amount of data. So that's what a company like Datasift do. They take in the fire hose, they process it, and they actually do store it, and then they, they will then sell you a little garden hose coming off it so that you'll be, you'll, you can actually deal with it. So, um, but that's sort of the sort of pricing you're talking about here is sort of, you know, for even for a small kind of, a small, their small <coughs> startup business price is $3,000 a month. So that gives you an idea of, of the cost overall, you know, if you're going up to platinum at $15,000. Now, the people, that companies that use this are the, the mon social media monitoring companies at the moment, but I can see in the future as enterprises really kind of start to, to engage with big data and use it, then they will actually go directly to these sorts of resellers, supp data suppliers. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is lean business cases. So we, um, uh, we, we also have this kind of uh, assumption that uh, again, going, getting, trying to get away. There's there's a lot of kind of uh, assumption that social doesn't really have a business case, doesn't have an ROI, and I, I think we, we we need to go beyond that and actually say for each thing we do on social, we have to have a business case. Even if even if even if we're not sure it's going to work or not, I think it's it's more about finding a lean business case than just doing something and seeing if it works. So as an example, you, you know, having a Facebook page like his coach and edit one we're at today. Uh, that makes perfect sense. It's not you're not you're, you're not it's not costing you an enormous amount of money. It's it's using the it's using the platform. You're not re having to rebuild your own system, your own kind of version of Facebook, just to engage with your your customers. But this sort of example here, you know, you wouldn't want to go and build a, a your own Mark. This chap here is talking about building Markville, building his own version of Farmville. You wouldn't want to spend two hundred fifty thousand pounds to sell your company just just to build a game. And that's a sort of extreme example. But the point is here, we're using the using the social platforms versus kind of trying to create our own um, and and trying to trying to find the sort of individual lean business cases for each aspect of of, of what we're doing on social CRM. So. When it, so I really just want to encourage us really to, to not to worry if we say, well, look, we're not really going to do that much this year, but we are going to do this one thing on Twitter and we're going to, we're going to respond to our Twitter complaints about our business. That's the only thing we're going to do and we'll make a business case around that. I think that's a great place to start because that's a, a, a clear business case and you can track it and you can, you can, you can say this is, the res this is where we were today, this is what happened afterwards. And I think that's a, that's a, a much better approach. Uh, Social, you need to use it appropriate. Social as a, as a, as a um, <laughs> so, so social is a, um, I'll explain, so I'll explain this. So, so social is an emerging, it's emerging culture, it's an emerging etiquette. We as businesses don't know exactly how to inter inter interact with people on, on social. People don't know exactly how to integrate, into, 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 um, interact with each other on social. So this Boner's Barbecue, which is a, a restaurant in the States, um, that, you know, basically outed one of their um, customers who've refused to leave a tip, and there was a resulting uproar. I don't really think that's an appropriate use of their Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quite fun, I know, it's right. And, and, may, and maybe, maybe, maybe it's sort of changed the way we think about tips. But, um, but what a the, the point here really is that what a business might see as appropriate use of social isn't what the customer might see as an appropriate use of social. And, um, and, and we need to be kind of continually aware of the, the, the emerging etiquette that happens on social media. Uh, following on from that is, is the data privacy. So here, it's free, but they sell your information. The, 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 I the idea here is that... Um, the data privacy is also emerging. Uh, it's not, there's, there's not a sort of, I know that we have the EU rules and, and all the rest of it around data and the information commissioner, which are all important, but actually, if you actually look at social data, the rules on privacy are emerging. They aren't actually agreed. So, uh, and, and the reason that they are is because what Facebook are finding is that people want to do interesting things with their data that don't fit with the national rules. So, uh, to give you an example, I'm, I want, if I, if I, um, 
upload a photo to Facebook, okay? So it's a photo of me and my friend, um, my, fr my friend John, uh, and John sees that photo. He then, it's a terrible photo of me, but it's a great photo of John. Now, John sees that photo and he says, right, that photo, I want to make that my profile picture. So he takes that thing and he cuts himself out, I'm cut out, but or whatever, but it's a profile picture. Now, should I be able, as a Facebook user, to delete that photo? I don't know, no one knows, the, the, you know, there's because it actually stopped being my photo, it started to become John's profile picture, that's pretty impo important, and that's going out. So data privacy itself, the, the ownership of data, it's kind of a bit fungible, it's changing, we're not, the, the sites like Facebook, Google+, Plus are struggling with this data privacy, granularity issue every day, and we're following in their footsteps, to be honest. And we, um, we, we, should, we shouldn't kind of, kind, of, kind of lock ourselves down to our existing understanding of data privacy because it is changing, and social data changes how we think about individual levels of data. And following on from that is that, um, uh, I'll come on to that later. So, uh, so, so there's no magic bullet. So, um, so yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, one more thing I want to say on, on this data is that the granularity of the data is changing as well. So, um, so uh, as an example, um, in your customer records system, in your legal framework around your customer, you have your customer record. And that, that, is, the, that is your kind of, you, you probably have all your privacy laws and all your data privacy all set up legally around that. So it's the person's, like Toby's name, his address, his um, date of birth, but it's all in one kind of point. It's all in one kind of unit. What Facebook and people are doing as you break up into photos, tweets, status updates, date of birth, you know, friend requests, f list of friends, they're starting to break up each of those individual data elements into separate data privacy around them. Does that make sense? So, um, so, uh, uh, so I, again, I, what I can do is I can upload a photo of me and John and make sure that only 12 people of my friends see it or I could make sure that 150 people see it, or I could make sure the whole world sees it. So that privacy layer that is actually around the data element, not around me as a, as a user. So that, again, changes the way we need to think about data and the systems that we're using, because actually each element of data, whether it's a photo or a piece of text or a piece of actually needs its own privacy kind of thinking and privacy around it. Uh, so there's no magic bullet. I wish there was. I wish I could say to you, and here is the most amazing system. You can buy Salesforce, you can buy, uh, get Satisfaction, Syncap, Systemos, whatever it is. Uh, but it's not. I mean, Brian Solis saying uh, just, just last month, social CRM is just getting started. The tools that are on the market today are only part of the solution that we're going to need. And it's true. You don't, you, there, isn't, there is no kind of one size fits all with social CRM. Every company is different. You're, you, you, everyone, everyone is, every, every business, the, the priorities are different and the social networks that we use are different. Um, so how do we, ma sorry, we've got a nice video to talk, Toby talking for a bit. So how do we, how do we manage <laughs> internally? Um, so I, 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 one of the things that people have been talking about is command centers. Have you come across that sort of idea of the command center? So uh, this is a Gatorade video uh, explaining what they're doing in terms of command center. And I think it just gives us a flavor for, for where possibly one aspect of social and the way we manage social can be going. Gatorade have kind of, they've ad adopted, they, 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 they've taken social and it's gone, I think the key thing really I want to take away from that is that they've taken social away from a PR exercise. Uh, social is about, you know, what if someone says something bad about us? You know, it's gone away from that. 
they've gone it they've they've taken it and they've said actually you know what our brand is part of what people are talking about us and what they say about us and that is that that feeds back into the brand itself and what we need to we need to adapt as we kind of learn more about how people think about Gatorade. So they're, they're not just saying, they're not just saying we need to manage this, this thing over here that, that's happening. They're saying we want to be part of that thing that's happening and actually what people say will, will feed back to us and we'll, and we'll change the way we talk about Gatorade, we'll change the way that even the product comes because of what people are saying. So and that's a, sort of a different mindset in a business. And I, I mean, I, I, most businesses aren't necessarily there yet, but I think that you'll find that the, those, those big, those, the, the, a lot of the consumer, the bigger consumer brands, that this is the way they're, they're taking social, social. So they're not saying, oh, we need to rein back social. They're saying we need to do more social. We need to, it needs to be more than just marketing. It needs to be more than just sales. It needs to link to product. It needs to link to R&D. It links to, to PR links to everything and those sort of command centers are a visual representation for the whole business it's showing the people in the business we're taking social seriously so social CRM in the future what sort of things can we expect let's what about let's think about real time so here's um here's a, here's a girl she's at the she's at the cinema and um Maybe she's tweeted that she's just seen the, the latest blockbuster, or Prometheus, or whatever it is, and um, uh, uh, and, uh, and and she, Mrs. T's Chicago-style pizza have picked that up for whatever reason, and um, suddenly then they appear on the phone, the vouchers, discount codes for her to pop into Domino's Pizza or to Chicago-style pizza or whatever it is that, that she wants to go to um, next. So that kind of aspect, how can social, how can data that we're doing on our social network, how can it be picked up by by a business to feed directly to the mobile phone, which is incredibly important, uh, to, uh, to, to give them an offer. Gladvertising, if you come across gladvertising, yeah, I love it, it's a great phrase. Gladvertising, really, really, all it means is, you know, I'm, I'm walking down the street and there's two possible adverts that it'll show me on the left, okay? One is a, one is a here's some new, um, or show the girl, one is some new, some new jeans for going out tonight, the other one is a kind of let's get away from here. Let's go to let's go off to a desert island. Now, how do I know which advert to show her? The the answer is is, is kind of some sort of mood based sentiment based on what she's been doing on social her, on her social network. So if she's been going, I'm oh, fed up with fed up with Birmingham, fed up with the Cube, I'm fed up with flares, whatever it is. Then <laughs> <laughs> then 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 perhaps. Perhaps it's sort of coming to paradise is the is is the is the, um, is the gladvert that we show her. But if she's sort of yeah, I'm really looking forward to going to flares tonight. Then perhaps it's showing her the right um, clothes to get to, to go on there. So that's the kind of the idea of gladvertising. So again, it's using the data to to personalise the message, but it's using her social data to personalise the company's message. Uh, location aware, I think we're all kind of familiar with it, but the the, the, the sort of this idea that as I move around and as my location is known by, as I check in, a four square check in, as I check in to different locations, so the sort of the messages can be personalized according to my location. So um, uh, you're just, you're just, you realize you're just two blocks from a really great deal on some new jeans. I mean, it's an interesting message, it's relevant and it's location aware. So, uh, and people are already starting to do this kind of sort of geo advertising where you can, with, Go with Google adverts, you can, or with whoever it is actually, you can, do, you can, you can av advertise around your store. Um, Gap, again, have done that quite famously. Uh, the Internet of Things is coming. So uh, uh, the Internet of Things, as a, as a broad sort of idea is really that, that my car becomes connected to the internet, my fridge becomes connected to the internet. What does that mean? Uh, this, is a, this is a company that's actually doing it. It's called Mavia. Uh, and if you, you get an iPhone app, which can sort of starts to tell you about oil change, efficiency, uh, diagnostic, which is the kind of the, the, front, the front end for the, for the users. It tells you about your car, a bit sort of kind of enhanced car, but also that Th this, this tool is also internet enabled, so as you're driving past or driving into a city, it can start to put show up on the dashboard. Again, those kind of location aware advertising information. So have, why, don't you visit, um, why don't you visit our store um, here, here now that you've, co you've come back to Toronto or whatever it is. Um, so and, and, and just to sort of, just to sort of, just to reinforce that point, Behind all of this, behind all of these kind of new things that we want to do, we want to do in terms of our marketing, in terms of our engagement with our customers, a closer engagement, behind all of this is there needs to be the data. You know, you can't, you can't, you wouldn't be able to connect 
to the car if you didn't know that they'd come, they'd been, they'd, they'd come and liked your page on Facebook or they, they, they connected their car to you the last time they picked. So, so the things you can do are all, all reliant on the data that you've, you, you're collecting at the time. Collecting. Uh, socially empowered salespeople, this is kind of a, this is one called Percolate, which is a, a, a kind of a nimble gone, gone into sort of overdrive. But wh what you can do is you can, you can put in a search for a term and it will, it will, it will pull together all the different contacts out there on the social web and, um, and pull them together into a kind of a, a, a card index. But these big numbers, you'll notice those are the clout scores. So it's using the clout score to kind of identify who are the most, who, if, if I was going to sell, I don't know what this chap's selling in this example, but if I was, go if I was going to sell um, shoes or, or some, so a shoe machine, it would perhaps find all the, all the best shoe makers, uh, shoe companies in, in my area and see who are the most influential ones. Because actually as a sales guy, I want to get the guys, at the t I probably want to start with the guys who are the most sort of chatty and most, most influential at the top because then I've got that kind of drop network effect and drop of, of the information coming down. So this sort of tool can help salespeople really kind of guide their way around the social landscape. Um, uh, just a word about invasive personalization. So personalization can be too invasive. So we can, you know, this is here, it's all about your genome and we've got something just for you. Maybe that would be useful. But uh, if, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you have, but the Facebook advertising, you know, we can, we can, we can advertise at quite an interesting sort of deep level, you know, age 40 plus, uh, relationship single. Uh, they actually stopped these adverts, but they did used to happen, which is that um, you, could out, you could say 40 and still single, join a dating, light, dating site, uh, appears on your Facebook. It's pretty invasive. It's like, oh, <laughs> I, 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 maybe I like being single. You know? <laughs> but, but it's true. So, so, the, so, so we, we need to be aware that just because we've got, I mean, it's obvious, but just because we've got the data doesn't mean it's going to be, it's gonna be um, appropriate. Uh, and um, unless it comes back to this idea of social etiquette emerging, you know, perhaps uh, as users, as consumers see ads, um, we've got this kind of, we've got, there's a, lots of this talk around um, uh, ads that kind of stalk you, these stalking ads. I don't know if you've sort of, you've sort of felt to see it. So you go to one site and then it, they, they, they stalk you as they, uh, for the next sort of two or three weeks. Now, that's an emer there's an emerging discussion. You know, are consumers going to like it? Are they going to hate it? Are they, are they going to push, kick it out? Uh, and it's the same with this type of stuff. We kind of try things. Um, uh, as, as an example, Mark Zuckerberg tried something called Beacon, which is where he, he, he pulled in your transactional data. So uh, one of the other sort of things that we haven't sort of gone to, uh, the C CRM is we have the transactional data in the enterprise, and we're talking about the other kind of influence and conversational data outside the enterprise. So now, the social networks don't think that they haven't tried to, to, to capture transactional data. They have. Facebook's tried Beacon. There was another startup called Blippi, which takes your credit card and makes a, a list of everything you've ever sold. Now, but the, but the fact is that consumers don't like those networks. They don't actually want to have all their transactions tracked. Um, the, the classics of reason is, you know, if I go and buy a scarf at Gap, using my credit card, and that appears on the Facebook page, and then my wife immediately knows that I bought her a scarf. I mean, it slightly destroys the point of the present. And, and it's those sorts of issues that perhaps people, when they first create tools like Ble Beacon or Blippi, they haven't thought about. Um, the data shadow, the data shadow. We all carry a data shadow or a parachute of data behind us. So what, is, what do I mean by that? Well, think about Amazon. You've gone onto Amazon, you've bought uh, a number of products, you've bought um, over time, and Amazon is using that shadow of data about you to recommend the next thing that you should be buying. So it's, it's leveraging, the, leveraging that, that data about you. And, and if you talk to some of the, kind of the, 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 tech, the techies, they, they, actually, they actually will positively create a data shadow. So that they, they understand this point. So and it's, it's, you know, I'm not expecting every consumer to, to understand it explicitly, but, there is va but people are starting to understand that there's value to be had from creating a data shadow about you, letting these, soft, these tools know more about me, that's good, because then the recommendation is better. So people will, one, of the, one of the reasons that people might use something like Foursquare is that they, they, they know that if they check into 25 bars in this month, they might get a recommendation in the future, maybe not today, but they'll get a recommendation about what the next hot bar is going to be or the next hot party. So this kind of data shadow. And the key thing, again, here is that this data shadow is is not necessarily per company. It's, it's also, you, you, you know, you also think people, companies like Foursquare will sell you, they will make aware how that data shadow around a, a consumer. So a, another question is how do we leverage those data shadows? Um, and, fi and finally, so um, 
uh, no, second, finally, yes. Yeah. So social, re social recommendations. I, I mean, I love the Huffington Post. If you haven't, haven't used it, it's a very interesting, very interesting sort of newspaper. Uh, and the reason it makes it interesting is that kind of almost at the top is you've got to log into it, which is a bit funny. I've got to log into my, my, my newspaper. Uh, but once I've logged in, I get to see what my friends have read. And that's great. I love it. I can, oh, and actually, I, I did have one friend who'd read something. I thought, oh, <laughs> I hadn't put that on you reading Jennifer Aniston's latest pictures for the news guy. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't shamed him here. But, um, uh, you know, it's quite interesting, that sort of thing. And, and, um, uh, and, uh, and I, I didn't then go and read Aunt Jennifer Aniston's pictures because I didn't want it to appear to anyone else. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we're, we're sort of learning as we go. And, and, um, uh, but then, again, here, what's Suffington Post doing? It's taking the fact that my friends have read this, showing that explicitly to me, but it's also using that to, to, to power recommendation. What, what articles might Toby like as a result of this? And it's the same thing, you know, whether it's, whether it's stories, whether it's products, whether it's um, services. Th th this sort of recommendation loop is very powerful, and it's something that, the kind of, that will become increasingly uh, liked by consumers because it's actually giving me a lot of value. It's saving me a lot of time in a very kind of information-full world. So, finally, so just to summarise then, so the kind of three sort of, three kind of key, key take, takeaways really. Social CRM, it's, what is it? It's weaving uh, the social data into your CRM practice. You can't track everything, you know, stick to your business cases, and um, it's not a fad. It's not, I'm afraid, you know, if you're hoping it's going to go away, it's not, it's going to be even more pervasive. I, um, I did a, I was a, a hackathon with Mark Zuckerberg a couple of years ago, and he, at that time he said, we, um, that was 2010, and he said, he said, we're at 5%. That's, that was, you know, that's somebody who's already, already, already kind of got, he already had sort of 600 million Facebook users uh, using it. He said, we're at 5% of what we're going to be. And that is that kind of, right, 5% is nothing. It's not 20%, not 50, all about it. It's all about 60% of the way there. It's not, it's 5%. So that kind of, that kind of idea that social is, is small it, and that is, 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 is wrong, it's going to be even more per pervasive. And it won't necessarily be just one, one Facebook. It'll be lots of different ones. It, exactly how it plays out, we're not sure. But the fact is that social data, the dig our digital lives, on, 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 on our, our lives played out on digital, on digital media is going to be increasingly part of... Um, part of the way of the landscape, of the consumer landscape, of the business landscape. And as social CRM people, this is the right time to be start thinking about it, creating the business cases, starting to sort of weave it into our businesses. So thank you very much. That's my, that's my kind of food for thought. Uh, hopefully it hasn't been too much of a, uh, of a, of a, of a download. It um, would uh, be great to sort of... Um, great to sort of have some questions. And, and, and really, I, I mean, I, I think possibly the sort of... So the, the first, sort of, first sort of question that I kind of like to put back to you and, and perhaps maybe to talk with, the, with your neighbour on the left first is, is if, 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 um, if you were going to do um, social, something social CRM today, what, w what could you do within your business? I mean, that's the sort of the, sort of the question. Because there's, there's so much you ca there's can do, but what could you do today that would, would get you started? Before that, Toby, thank you. Very much. Good, thank you. <laughs> Terrific. I promise something truly inspirational. That was truly inspirational. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Before we do what Toby's told us to do, who's got some questions, things they want to probe? I mean, my question is an obvious one, which is, okay, on the cloud score, what was yours? Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, oh, yeah, it's good. My cloud score's 50, but I'll, oh. give, I'll give an interesting, interesting thing is that on my birthday, it went up to 55. <laughs> <laughs> so you can fake it. <laughs> questions for Toby? Great question. I think um, I think I think the place to look for the answer is is to look at what they call reward media. So if you look at um, uh, reward media, is 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 where you exchange uh, some information about yourself as a you know, so it might be my Facebook account, it might be my email address typically, uh, and I or sign up. 
and I exchange that for points on a Facebook social game. So uh, I, can, I can get tw 25 Farmville coins in exchange for my piece of data. So that whole reward media kind of, and there's an industry around it, you wouldn't believe it, there's lots of companies doing it, uh, because it's, it actually works, in, lots of brands have tried it and found that actually it's not that different from, you know, you can slightly bribe people, give us a bit of data, you know, the, some, and for some brands it actually works, not all brands obviously, but the, um, so I think, I think it is, that, that is another part of that kind of emerging culture is that, 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 we, that people have become aware of the value of their data and are willing to trade it, but they want something in return, and uh, we, I think the marketing industry has been doing it for ages. We, 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 we say, give us your email address and you can enter this competition. And it, it, it's, it's there. And uh, I think some of the digital media are making it, reward media are making it even more explicit. Uh, and I think that's kind of behind your question, really, is, is do, should we allow that? Do we, do we want to make, train people in, in understanding the value of their individual piece of data? And I, I, think, it, I, think, I think that you're going to have both. You have people who don't care about data say, yep, sign me up for everything. I want a club card. I want a next card. I want everything. I give everyone my data. I don't care. And then you have some people who are, are really kind of, oh, I don't want to give them anything. Uh, I'm private and the things. And the trouble is we have to support both ends of the spectrum. We have to support the people who, 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 who give us the data and we have to support the people who don't. And that makes the whole kind of data privacy question and the reason I think we, we need to go down to granular level data because privacy, because people have different, have different requirements. Makes sense. Great answer. Any other questions? Measuring metrics, yeah. what are the big magic metrics for this? Yeah, so the latest, um, so, uh, so we're talking about paid owned and earned media, uh, which is kind of the, 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 the so paid owned and earned is uh, how much do I, how much paid media I know, I know a lot of businesses will know that if I spend X amount, I'll get this amount of clicks back response, so that's paid in. Own, and that there's a kind of the own media, which is I've got my uh, um, I've got my channel, my Facebook channel, and I know the uh, I know the number of views, for example, per post. I can tell number of vote posts, and I can count the number of engagements, the so number of likes, and stuff like that. So I've got own media, and then earn media is then how do we track the, the sort of the amplification? What do people then do? How many people then share it? How many people um, share that piece of information? Or um, or kind of comment on it. I think the comment is. Uh, classifiers and, and the, sort of the, the current sort of thing, latest thing I've the latest ones I've heard is there's an EPM score. So Syncaps will provi provide you an EPM score, which is an engagement per meal. So you can count the number of engagements and compare that across content. Uh, and there's also this idea of standard engagement versus amplified engagement. So if someone likes a piece of information, it's a it's a standard. But if they then share it, they recommend it. That's amplified. So starting to sort of break it down into that sort of that start to break it down into, into paid, owned, and earned, and then standard and amplified is where it's going. Thank you. Um, going back to data privacy, you talked about the rules that are emerging. Um, do you, how do you see kind of standardisation happening or not in the future? We've just had the ICO cookies, quite stupid in my opinion, kind mm -hmm. of, you know, law coming. Um, you know, how do you see that moving forward? Uh, um, yeah, I... I well, I, my personal view is that th that we need it needs to be global. So the first the first thing is I think we're sort of I mean it's fine to have a European law and a Canadian law, but the reality is it's glo it's a global problem. So I think we need to get we need to get beyond this kind of I, I don't think I don't think it's being implemented at the right level really, and, and I think that's why it's so confusing. Uh, but the second thing is that, that that fragmentation is a fact. There isn't there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, thinking that we will, we will kind of somehow we'll all come back to where we were 40 years ago with all watching four channels on. Oh, I probably went for. I don't know how many. I don't, I'm not looking at you. That <laughs> 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 was so nice to me. You bastard. <laughs> Back to um, a small number of channels. That's not true. We we are fragmented. We are we are we are in diff We're in Pinterest. We're in Facebook. We're in Twitter. We are. I'm not in LinkedIn. I am in LinkedIn. There isn't going to be a single channel, a single, and, and because there isn't a single platform, there isn't going to be a single data privacy because each each one is slightly different. Should I share this photo? Do I because it come part of my profile? <coughs> so I, I just I don't see I I, I don't see there being a, pr a standard ever emerging. No. I think, I think I, I would look at Facebook and say this is the most advanced, but
but you know, the guy from Google Plus was stood up last week and said, we're going to be more advanced than Facebook in managing your data privacy, and it's coming soon. So we, we just, and they've got all these kind of sliders. That's where, where, where Google's going through these slides. You know, a lot of, lot of, you know, share a lot, share a little. Uh, it's give you control. Give you control, yeah. And yes, I will ask the poor black and white TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, other questions first, Chris. Any other questions? Um, you were talking about attracting key influencers in the brand based on people's health sorts. And if there's only an infinite number of these key influencers and there's a whole load of brands trying to attract them, how do you keep those influencers engaged with your brand as opposed to your competitors? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Well, GIFGAF, well, well, GIFGAF used gamification. So gamification, for those who haven't heard the latest buzzword of 2010, is using the, the mechanics of social games and applying them outside. So uh, uh, as an example, um, it basically means you, the, 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 it's been implemented very, very kind of a lot of non not very interesting levels. But GIFGAF are doing something very good, which is they, they have their community, their support community, and then as people answer questions from each other, they will then get points from GIFGAF, which is great. And those points, they actually can convert <coughs> into uh, money off their um, mobile phone tariffs. GIFGAF's a mobile, MVNO, mo mobile phone operator. Um, so, uh, so GIFGAF have, have kind of, what they're not paying their influencers, but they're, they're incentivizing people to the community to support each other, which is what they want to do. And, but then, coming back to your first question, one of the problems with clout uh, is, uh, and this is sort of delving deeper into it, is that clout is a general influence score. So I might be a sort of, you know, I might be sort of reasonably, reasonably knowledgeable about social CRM, but I don't know anything about football. Yet, if I walk, if I walk into the kind of, the, if, 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 the, if I walk into a football conversation, I suddenly have this very high influence level. Of that. So, so um, one of the things that the influence um, companies are doing, people like Cred and Peer Index, is starting to look at your influence within a community. So it becomes, it, be, it starts to be, what is your clout score for social? What is your clout score for marketing? What is your clout score as a mummy blogger? Uh, and then as we, as we get that kind of, uh, what, what, as we get that kind of level of granularity, we're then, it's more, it's more, it's, it's easier to identify the influence who's specific to your, the community that you want to go for. Great. Please. So, that was a great presentation. Um, did you see the future of, 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 of social media industry as a whole as, as driving genuine ROI for, for, for businesses? I mean, I, I've been involved in dabbling with it, the company I work for in the last year or so. There are a lot of examples in our industry and in the wider world of building lots of brand advocacy, getting lots of likes, getting people engaged in the brand. But um, almost reassuringly, in a way, a lot of those examples don't feature uh, genuine examples where, where, where companies are, are making money out of social media. Mm -hmm. and, and the nature of the word social means that the people use it for social purposes and you know are, are they averse to, to having those sort of sales messages driven directly at them mm -hmm. and, and is, it, is it something that as a general, as a general room of moving forward people will see as a, as a, as a sales mechanism? Mm -hmm. I think it's a great great purpose. I mean not not, for not every brand, I mean, this is obviously all the answer, isn't it? But not every brand has, uh, can be social. I mean, we, I've had people asking, how do, we, how do we run a social campaign for STD clinics? And you just think, oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I think they're the manager, but it's, there, there are some things that are really difficult. And, but then there are other brands for whom it's such a, it just works and they, they, um, they invest in it and it carries on. So um, I worked for, I worked work with a, um, a games company quite early on, uh, console games, but they, they, they almost very quickly, they switched off their email and gone to using Facebook because it just completely worked for their audience uh, and that was the way in which their audience wanted to communicate. So um, there isn't a one-stop shop and I think, I think that I, I, coming back to, to how I would do it now is that my main advice, if I'm, not, I'm no longer, a, 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 my main sort of experience would be that most companies when they approach social, they try and do a, something big. They try and do a big thing. They do, a, like that Mark Schaefer example of the Markville, they try and create this big property. And really social is about lots of little <coughs> things. It's, it, is, it is unfortunately as simple and shallow as, did you have a good night out last night on your Facebook page? And it's that kind of thing that, um, that works and gets you the ROI. And then you, you measure before, you see the spike, and then you measure after. And, 
and I think it's it, it, unfortunately it's coming down to that little level of detail. It's not trying to build a big sort of platform. You know, let's get everybody, let's shovel. You know, everyone, everyone likes talking to each other. Let's get them into our room. I just don't think that's the way it works. Everyone's on Facebook, and they, and, and they, you send them a little thing, and then you set, they see that works. You send them something else, and someone else, and you, you kind of fill the stream with lots of little stuff. And I think then you're on, on you're onto getting some ROI. Coming off that point, I was yeah. fascinated by your Gateway example. <coughs> I mean, are are you aware of other companies trying to do that? that sort yeah. of effectively monitoring and analysis and using the data to inform everything yeah. you do. So, so that's, so, um, so as a, if, you're, if you're in social, if a social media, there's a whole set of listening tools, they call listening yeah. or monitoring tools. So uh, you kind of rat in six and very seven. Uh, the other, there's another example which I could share later, which is a, there's a Dell video which is about a bit longer and that has, uh, it has exactly the same thing. Dell have put in a command center and they have, um, what, what Dell have done, which is which going beyond that gateway, is they again could have kind of pulling in different parts of the business and suppliers and all the rest of it into that command centre. Because um, again, I think it's I think it's about mind share within the organisation. I think that, that the more that the the organisation starts to think that there is value happening in social, then you, the, the organisation will come up with better ideas to engage with people on social. Thank you. Other questions. Um, there's a lot of a, a lot of the examples and case studies you show where, and not you, one shows, mm. um, where you talk about how location devices and location tools are used and how data is used, they always feature, or in the main feature, promotions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm in the cinema, for example, mm -hmm. there, I'm the cinema, I get a promotion for a pizza. Mm -hmm. um, and I read recently somewhere that the reason people engage with companies on Facebook and the like is because they're getting some sort of deal in return, um, which must if that <coughs> must be very brand damaging because you're, it's always associated with some sort of sales promotion mm. or some sort of price promotion. You always never mind you're giving away margin. <coughs> are there any case studies or examples where brands are are not discounting price mm -hmm. um, but are uh, adding value? to kind of build that relationship? Mm, that's a good question. Um, Blackberry, when they, in Indonesia, they ran, a, they ran one of these tweets, which was, <coughs> you know, do you want to share with, with your Blackberry, you can um, you get your BBM number and you can connect to, to connect to a friend for free instant text messaging. And very popular, but, and they, they have these kind of, a popular kind of meme was just sharing the, the, your BBM number. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they did that as a tweet, uh, as a Facebook, pe Facebook, um, uh, uh, thing on their page, a Facebook comment, and then lots of people used it. So then they thought, right, well, that's really popular. Let's build an app to do that. And then they so they built an app on Facebook so that people could kind of share BBM with, each, with their friends, and that was popular. And then then they used they put they they looked at putting that app into other territories as well. So that for me is an example of where they're using digital to add value to the to the product. You know, actually the product isn't social. BBM is. BBM is a sort of social product, but it, there isn't a kind of a, a layer which says, do you know which friends are on BPM? It's B, 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 BBM. So they've, they've created properties that, that are the digital, that are social, that are um, giving me more as a customer, as a, as a BlackBerry customer. And what did BlackBerry get out of that exchange? Well, they've got, they've got deeper, they've got, a, they've got customers that are deeper engaged with BlackBerry. Cause, so, because what you, cause the friction of leaving a social network is so high. So one of the other sort of thoughts that we're sort of thinking about at the moment is the idea of, of the consumer investment in the digital property. So as a consumer, I've invested yeah. money in Facebook. I've invested time into Facebook to get it right. <coughs> and actually, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to ditch that investment and start using mm -hmm. Google Plus because actually all my friends and my investment is on Facebook. Uh, so, so again, so back we've encouraged the consumer to invest in their digital property, which means that they, so they have a stake. Yeah. Other questions? Last question. Yep. Yeah, hi. I'm, I'm really interested in, in today because I work for the NHS, so it's um, it's something that obviously is quite an alien type of approach, but it's something that we're introducing in both in social media. Mm -hmm. But taking it one step further, and there were sort of three things that struck me. One is that you need investment to do it properly, obviously, and back up. Um, two, it, it could become intrusive, particularly if that means that the NHS, you could be recommending an action um, that becomes quite intrusive. And, and three, how do you manage that reputation management when it all goes wrong? So it, it's a very different type of approach for something like the NHS. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, I, mean, I, I think the um, 
I mean, gov the, the, the government problem is that you, and, and the, the government problem is often the same problem as uh, uh, internal social media problem, which is that, it, it, that people don't have a choice to opt in. They're either in or they're not. So the way in which you use social has to be, has to become 100%. It has to be, you know, you have to have <coughs> things that everybody can engage with. You can't be just, you can opt in and get this uh, pizza discount or, you know, I don't know, uh, Leg surgery discount. I don't know what it is. So, so I think um, I think I think I think I would look at um, internal use of social media. Uh, so, so how companies have sort of how companies have sort of have, have allowed it within the, the ranks and, and 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 how employees have reacted to that. So, um, one one sort of one uh, a, a good uh, um, uh, one sort of thought on that is that. With gamification, one of the problems that you have with gamifications is not everybody wants to play any vaguely in a game in their work setting. So how do you how do you use these things in within a, a work environment? I think the whole sort of opt in. So people have 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 created sort of systems where people um, where you create teams and you can join the team. And if you're on the team, then you get into the environment. So I think it's that kind of balance of of, of mandatory and mandatory and commercial that you have to kind of resolve. So all it remains for me to do is say thank you again to Toby very, very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs>